Ladies and gentlemen, Roto Grinders, welcome to the PropCast here on Roto Grinders. My name is Alex Dunlap. I am the editor-in-chief at rosterwatch.com. I am the host of Roster Watch, which is on Saturday night, 7 to 9 p.m. Eastern on Sirius XM Fantasy Sports Radio and simulcast on Sirius XM NFL Radio Sunday mornings for the game day edition, 7 a.m. to 9 a.m. Eastern over there. Joining me on this first edition of the PropCast, this brand new show for the NFL season where we will discuss uh, NFL player props and the situations surrounding them as they pertain to our DFS strategy is our guy, Bobby Fi from Roto Grinders. You've seen him on the, you know, he does every sport. I think Bobby Fi, do you even do like WNBA or, or, or NHL and stuff? No, I actually skipped the WNBA and NHL. I'm pretty like meat and potatoes. It's baseball, basketball, football for the most part for me with a little bit of golf in there. Well, I, I've certainly always enjoyed your uh, your baseball and basketball content. Those are sports that I consistently try to get try to get better at, and always uh, have enjoyed the uh, early podcasts that you do with with Grant and those guys. So, uh, super excited to be on here with you, man. It's gonna be a real fun season, and it's it's a cool show that Dan has planned out here uh, for us to kind of go over these player props um, and just. You know, talk about we're going to keep score. So we're going to we're, we're going to see who wins by the end of the season between between me and Bobby about the picks on these player props. And as we go through them, we'll also talk a little bit about the game. We'll talk about some other plays within the game, maybe some general DFS strategy, be it for I know Bobby. I, are you you're, you're more of a tournament guy, right? You Mostly. love playing tournaments. OK, so yeah. some tournament strategy from from Bobby. I'm more of a kind of a cash game guy that's always trying to learn how to get better in tournaments. So. Uh, kind of get it from two sides of the table there. And uh, also we'll have some other, I have 75 props now up over at rosterwatch.com. So there were some of those that I wanted to kind of outline uh, here in the show that we don't have uh, pulled up. We didn't have earlier, but some that really pop off as far as uh, when you compare it to pricing on DraftKings and FanDuel. So without further ado, let's get into the show. Uh, David, let's get this slide tossed up for Odell Beckham who the wide receiver of the New York Giants has a over under this week of 72.5 receiving yards. Bobby Fye, what the hell do you think about this player prop? Where, and where are you on Odell Beckham? Uh, I think he'll be fine. He's too talented, like as long as he's on the field, not to be fine in the long run. But uh, I don't know how much of a fan I am of this Oh, this is a tough one for me. I struggle with this one, but I think I'm still going to say uh, over um, just on, I think that he'll get enough attempts in a game like this, which I think I actually think that, you know, I, Jacksonville should be able to control. And I think that you should see Manning maybe have to throw the ball a little more than he wants to. Uh, I don't know. I'm going to, I'm going to say over, but I don't love it. Yeah. I, I'm not sure that I really, I'm not sure that I love it either. It's really hard to, Here's the thing, man. It's 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 Odell Beckham, and like we're not, we're not even talking about his salary yet. But down at seven K on DraftKings, and, and I mean, you know, it's going to be Jalen Ramsey or it's going to be AJ Bou- AJ Bouye on him, and you know the seventy two point five. I mean, I mean last last year he came into the he came into the season, and in the first week that he played in week two, he and, and that game, remember, he only he had a stinker in that game. I don't know how many yards it was, but it wasn't seventy two. Uh, let's see here, 36 yards, so exactly half of 72. But then you look at his 2016 season, he got less than that, um, let's see, once at Minnesota. So he had Xavier, probably had Xavier Rhodes then, 56 yards at Green Bay, uh, a couple – yeah, I can see this going under because he also had 49 at L.A. that year, 46 at Philly that year, 46 at Chicago, 64 – Again, at uh, at home versus Detroit, 44 at Washington and 28 at Green Bay. So he's been a player who, despite the, over the course of the season, has always kind of come through for you as a, a elite wide receiver one with a little bit less volume than some of these other target hogs. Maybe it's may, – I, I, I think I'm taking the under. I think I'm taking the under. Versus Jalen Ramsey and A.J. And AJ Bouye. With that said, Bobby – how do you feel being, being such a big tournament guy? How do you feel about the in situations like this in general, where it's an elite player going up against an elite matchup and you're getting him as cheap as he's been since he was a rookie. And you're, you're also, you're also getting him at an ownership price that is, is much less than you'll typically get him at. Yeah, it's tempting. Uh, I might like in some really long shot tournaments, give it a shot, but 
I still think that just the upside is somewhat capped by having those guys on you, especially Jalen. Um, so I, I don't know. I, 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 like I said, I don't feel like I love the over and I don't think I'm going to be playing a lot of Beckham and DFS, even at that discounted price. I just feel like even in this week, particularly, there's a lot of guys in the lower price range that could easily surpass this and don't have nearly as tough of a route. So I'm just probably going to go elsewhere for DFS. And, and we'll talk about some of those guys here in the pod because I, I, I really, since I've pulled the rest of these props, I, I really want to get your opinion on, on some of these others because some of them really fly, fly off the page to me. But uh, of the in in this same game, we actually have three props from this same game that we're going to run through, and one of them, David, let's toss up this let's 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 toss up the next slide. This is Keelan Cole, wide receiver for the Jacksonville Jaguars, and I wanted to make sure and ask about this prop and get this prop from one of my guys super early so we could discuss it on the on the, here on the program. I was a little bit surprised when it came in. 51.5 receiving yards is the prop for Keelan Cole. Keelan Cole has been the talk of, of DFS circles for the last – basically ever since Marquise Lee got hurt because he's minimum price on FanDuel. He's only 3,800 on DraftKings, and he's a really good player. And towards the end of last season, he, he showed that he was a, he's a really good player – He's going up against a New York Giants defense that is awful in coverage. You know, their best player in coverage, Janoris Jenkins, really started to not look as good uh, last year. With that being said, Bobby, it just seems to me like every single year we have a guy in week one that's a chalk wide receiver. Like last year, I remember it was Kendall Wright that I couldn't understand why anybody would play this dope you know, in week one. And, of course, he goes on to he goes on to bust. Uh, I remember there was a Rashard Higgins week that was just an awful kind of play that everybody was on just because, you know, it was at a point in time when people wanted to squeeze in those high price runners. How do you feel about these chalky wide receivers, even guys in seemingly good matchups in week one where, I mean, it's, it isn't like something with a James Conner or something that I want to talk with you about later where we feel like we could really peg the volume to this cheap price. Uh, there's as much of a chance that Keelan Cole only gets four targets in this game as he gets seven or eight targets, right? Yeah, I think that's really possible. I still think it's like, if you bet me, I still think I would take the over on 51 and a half. Um, but I think there's definitely a, a path. I don't know. I mean, actually, I, I think that like what you do in regular DFS in this spot is it makes sense to try and take a pivot over to Westbrook or even Moncrief um, just in the same game because we honestly don't really know what's going to happen. It's not like we should base it on a few games at the end of last year entirely. And I, I mean, what if Westbrook, who was the super chalk a couple times last year and busted for us, like every what, time, what is, this, this, every time this, why isn't this his big breakout game? Yes, you know yeah. what I mean? We don't, we don't really have a feel for it. That's what the interesting thing about week one. So when you see a heavy chalk guy like this, in terms of just, you know, fantasy, it just makes sense to take a pivot to another ta- you know, a talented athletic receiver on his team like Westbrook who could, on, you know, have four catches, but two of them for 40 plus yards and then touchdown. Like, I just think I would probably uh, just pivot over there at one tenth the ownership. And that's an interesting way to go in GPP is just to get away from it. But I still think that more likely than not, he's the 51 and a half. I think I'd still take the over. But again, I don't feel like I would be surprised if he had, you know, four targets for two catches and 27 yards. And it's not like uh, if people, you know, it's like, if, if you're going to be playing a chalk wide receiver, that's kind of a middling kind of player, sort of like, I mean, I, I, I like Keelan Cole. I think he's good. I think he's good. And I think he's an awesome kid too, man. Like that kid loves football. I, I love Keelan Cole. With, with that being said, man, like he's kind of, he's, it's not like he's an elite NFL weapon currently. And when you're going to take a chalk player like this, like, I don't know, to me, it, it would just needs to be, it, it needs to be tied to more guaranteed volume. And like you're connected to Blake Bortles. Yeah, I mean, it's not like what I mean, what could go wrong? I mean, there's a million things that could could go wrong. With that being said, I'm with you, Bobby. This this is going to be very much fun if you and I keep agreeing. But (laughs) I'm I'm going to take the over on the 51.5 yards. I'm bullish on Keelan Cole as a a player. I just don't know. I think probably the most likely outcome here is something like maybe three, uh, the, the, the implied receptions prop for this based on his uh, yards per catch last year is right about 3.6, 3.5. So, I mean, I think three to four catches and, you know, you know, 58 yards or something like that. So it's probably right in the wheelhouse to, enough to win this prop, but maybe not enough to make it worth our while with such high ownership uh, in tournaments. So mm-hmm. in, the, uh, in that same game, 
we have Leonard Fournette, who I looked up with Chris Gimino earlier. Uh, let's throw up the slide for Leonard Fournette. Um, he's, he has an over-under in this one of 82.5 rushing yards. I feel like – I thought he was going to be pretty popular on this slate because of the good matchup uh, over at Roster Watch via our proprietary matchup tool. We have the, this matchup versus the uh, Giants front with their new personnel as the seventh best matchup of the week for opposing runners. And um, the Jaguars, I believe, come in as slight favorites. So it seems like a Leonard Fournette spot. Bobby, 82.5 yards. How do you feel about it? We all know Leonard Fournette's a beast. Or I think I know Leonard Fournette's a beast. Do you, do you know deep in your heart that Leonard Fournette is a beastly man? Absolutely. I'm all okay. over Leonard Fournette. I'm not, <laughs> not, I never changed. There's two things I never pivoted on, and I never pivoted on Gurley, and I'm not going to ever go. pivot on Leonard Fournette. Perfect. Um, yeah. So, yeah, I think this is an easy bet on the over for me again. Um, I like this. I mean, I just think this is – I think he's probably, like, one of the more obvious plays at running back that people aren't going to go to. And I, I, would it be surprising, especially with potential game flow? They sh I mean, like, the, the spread I know is close. I know it's in New York. I still think, you know, in the rain, Jacksonville's defense and running the ball should be able to win this game. And I wouldn't be surprised if he ran for multiple touchdowns. I think he's going to run for over 100 yards. I think he's going to run – over 100 yards well I think that, that would be fantastic because I'm playing him a ton I think he's going to go over two so you and I are same, you and I are on the same page three for three in these I'm just I'm looking at his rushing totals just from from his rookie season and in, 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 in the games where he was healthy and what I mean by healthy is it seems like there were these games where he wasn't really healthy where he only got 12 or 14 touches you know if, if he got anything more than you know it looks like anything more than 17 touches he was he's going to crush this Mm -hmm. So, I mean, he comes in healthy. Things are fine. He's slim. He's trim. We were at the I, – I wasn't there personally, but I saw the video from my co-host at Jaguars training camp. He looks trimmer. He looks like he's lost a little bit of weight. Uh, I think both him and Joe Mixon are both candidates this season to see that kind of uh, – not necessarily like a Le'Veon Bell year two, but a Le'Veon Bell-like year two where you lose a bunch of weight, you look a little bit better, you're, important, you're involved a lot more in the passing game. Yeah. I want to ask you just before we got off the subject though, Bobby, you talked about the Jaguars defense. Do you like the Jaguars defense this week? I do more than, uh, more than most people do. There's a couple other defenses I prefer, but I do, I do like it quite a bit. I think that this is a spot where like, I don't know, it's a, it's a weird thing where they're probably as much as people will play them, they, they should be the most popular defense this week and they're not. So I should, and I know we can talk about that one too, but like, I, I don't know. I, I like their defense, but I just, there's a couple I like better especially that are going to be super low on. Do you think, do you think everybody's going to be on Baltimore? I think so. I mean, I think that's the, that's the chalk to who you're going to bet on. But I think even that's probably wrong. Like, <laughs> but really? I still think so, there's other ones. Why do you think I like wrong? Baltimore. Yeah. I like Baltimore. I just think that you got, I mean, just being, it's being so chalky, like all because this kid had a bad game against, wasn't it against this, these Jags where he had the five, yeah, touch, five picks? No, that um, he, Peter, that he, he he went out to the Chargers for that one. It was the Chargers. Oh, that's right, the Chargers. Well, they had, yeah. they were they were, they might have been first in takeaways actually last year. Um, yeah. Anyway, um, I don't know. I I just I'm not gonna just settle. I think they're gonna they're gonna grind the ball a lot. I think you might. I just don't think you're gonna see like a ton of bad throws or bad turnovers as much as everybody else is so convinced. And we've seen Eli at times look shaky, and this this defense is mean. So I. I don't know. I, I think that I would pr I would prefer this defense over theirs, but there's other defenses I prefer just because I think some offenses are going to be completely inept and nobody's on it. And that's that would be like a like the Titans, for example. I just think no. I think that should be much higher. I just think this Dolphins this Dolphins team would not surprise me if they came out and looked like the worst offense in the NFL. The uh, the um, we're just still speaking about that Baltimore game. I'm just I'm looking at the prop sheet that I have up at uh, up at Roster Watch the Week One NFL. DFS flex values based on Vegas player props where I've gotten about 75 in here so far. And one guy at the very top, I just want to ask you about, he's not on our sheet, but I just want to see what you think is a tournament dude. Cause I'm, what about shady? Because he's yeah. like, if you look at his prop, man, he's only 6,000 and he has about a 70 yard rushing prop, but his receiving prop is three and a half receptions, 25 extra yards. And he's plus plus one twenty five to score. If you take all that through the formulation, that's the, basically the fourth best implied uh, implied scoring profile on the whole 12 game slate for the price. Um, I don't think anybody's going to be on shady. People seem to have completely soured on him because 
of how risky he was. It wasn't season long, but we know he's going to play this week and they don't really have anybody else to give the football to is the issue just that everybody thinks the everybody just thinks that the bills are so bad and everybody wants to play the Baltimore defense. And mm -hmm. that's why no one's playing shady. I'm 90% sure that's what it is because I think at this price, like he could easily end up being a top three running back any week. Um, he was, we, he was number four on the season last year, right? Yeah. He was rushing yards. So right. I mean, yeah, it's crazy. I mean, yeah, I think that he's, I think he's a terrific tournament play, like a really, really terrific pin up either, either a pivot off of McCaffrey who I like a lot, you know, but everybody else does as well. But um, or even playing those guys like that together and maybe skipping out on, you know, maybe not taking a guy we're probably going to talk about a little bit and James Conner. I don't know. Well, uh, we'll, we'll keep going. But yeah, I just think that he's an interesting tournament pivot. We need to talk about James Conner, but we'll do it after we get through these these slides, because that's something where I'm going to I'm going to have to get some therapy from you to talk, <laughs> talk, talk, talk me off of it if I'm going to get, get off of it, especially after seeing the prop. Let, let's let's go here to the next one. Oh, this is this one I thought was just kind of interesting. It, it's the one you can uh, look at when it comes out. Um, Cam Newton, he's going to have an over under of around 37.5 rushing yards. These are all props that I got a little bit early from one of our offshore sources. So uh, who knows what it was going to be when it goes, goes up on five times or sports book and stuff like that. But they're generally very, very close. Uh, Cam Newton, the over under for his rushing yards. 37.5. What do you got, Bobby Fye? I think I'm actually going to take the under on this one. Um, it, it seemed like an, an over when I first looked at it, but then I thought about just, I don't think anything about Dallas at all. I don't think that Carolina is great. I don't think they're nearly as bad as probably most people think. I, I think that there's a, there's, to me, it's, it's a very logical that they're, they're going to be able to, I don't know, get ahead early and then play from ahead. I think that, that this game's going to play slow. I don't think he'll need to scramble as much against what I don't think is a very great, like an excellent pass rush. They'll maybe do a few design runs, but I think they'll start the season trying to get McCaffrey involved and try and build towards what they're going to, you know, go towards in the future. And that may not be Cam running quite as much as we're used to seeing him. So I'm going to take the under, but it's always nervous. They're wrecking with him just because it's one play. <laughs> All right, so we get our first disagreement here, finally. It could, it could just be a 1v1 on the whole show. Who knows? But I'm going to take the over, and I'll tell you my reasoning. Um, I think that Sean Lee is healthy, and I think Sean Lee is fast. And I don't think that everybody playing Christian McCaffrey is worried enough about how fast Sean Lee is and, and the kind of linebacker, the, the way he can get sideline to sideline and cover in space. I think if Christian McCaffrey gets, gets out there on option routes and he, and he can take Sean Lee out of the play – I think that a lot of times, instead of having that quick hit, the Cam's just going to duck it and run. I think I think he's going to have a little bit of volume here and a little bit of free space up the middle of the football field to get that done. We know that Jalen Smith is is pretty 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 still pretty heavy footed, even though he was he was an elite athlete previously. But I think that Sean Lee's going to be tasked with guarding a whole lot of Christian McCaffrey. I think if he can get cleared out, Cam's going to see that space. He's going to keep that football and try and run with it. And I just think if he does that four times. I think I'm going to be pretty close to getting to the over here on this one. So just from a schematic standpoint, I think that's where I am with Cam. Do you, do you have, do you have any other plays in this game? I don't think anybody's going to play Zeke Elliott. No. And I'm going to be one of those. <laughs> <laughs> you just don't, what, just because he doesn't catch, catch passes? Or like, no, I just would rather play Kamara, David Johnson, Leonard Fournette, yeah. um, even Melvin Gordon, Christian McCaffrey, right. even Dalvin Cook ahead of him. <laughs> You're right, right, right. It seems like it, it seems like this game could have a, could have a slow, a little bit of a slow pace, maybe. Yeah. Right. So you never know. Um, okay. So cool. So that's our first disagreement there. We'll go through and we'll read back which props we're on uh, at the end of the show. As I'm keeping score here on an old fashioned piece of uh, paper with an actual pencil, uh, you kids might have heard about. We used to have back in the day. All right, uh, to the next one, and this this kid this connects uh, perfectly with the last one that we talked about. Uh, this next slide is Christian McCaffrey, and we just talked about his receiving yards. I'll just I've I've already talked about what I think about the uh, about the receiving. With that, with this being said, I'm not sure that 43.5 man doesn't seem like too much for him to be able to rack up. I'm not as high on Christian McCaffrey for DFS this week just because I feel like he's going to be so heavily owned and he might struggle a little bit more than some people think. Uh, I think 43.5 might not be too hard to get to as far as a receiving yards number, though. Where, where are you on this one, Bobby? I think I would just take the, the slide over as the most likely scenario. Um, but 
I, you made a good case there a minute ago. And, and I, I think that there is a, definitely a path where he doesn't get there, but I, I could also see him just destroying this number. Yeah. Um, I, I think one. he gets over. It takes yeah. one. Yeah. Takes I think, I, I think he's going to get the over. I think it takes one. And it's like, that's, that's what I was saying earlier. I, I just the volume, you know, it was, a, it was a, the thing with the, you know, I'm not sure. I'm, I'm not sure he's gonna have the volume that some people hope for. He could, he could have the target. Like this could be, this could be the Christian McCaffrey show and everything that they've said in preseason. It's like, it's like mm-hmm. somehow they're doing it and they're like saying, like, well, we're, we told you we're giving the ball 25 times. We're just doing what we said. Like we'd be like, wow. But this is a hard one for me, man. If I had to put, was it 43.5? If yeah. I had to put five, put my real hard-earned American dollars on this. I take the over too, man. It's just, mm-hmm. I take the, I, I'm not going to sweat. I'm not going to sweat oh, that whole game. That just that one play where he gets loose. And yep. when he, when, when he does get loose, we know that the back end of that second year is bad. And do, do you like, do you like Devin Funches or DJ Moore, Greg Olson, any of mm-hmm. those guys on the care? So you're completely off this game, except for McCaffrey. I don't play players against the Dallas offense that plays really, really slow. And is probably going to play even slower this year. Um, they're going to run the ball a lot. They're going to play slow to the line of scrimmage. They're going to let the clock to go down. This team has been one of the slowest paced teams on offense. Doesn't set up for a great game flow environment in terms of DFS and just on a full slate. I don't see any reason to do it. Fair enough. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm, I'm with you there. It's one of those ones that whenever I get to it, I feel like, you know, I just, I just, I just skip over it, except for McCaffrey. What about Cam? What about Cam? I, I've heard Cam get a little bit of buzz. I think Cam's always like the best. He's like, he's the epitome of an awesome like DFS play. Last year when everyone was, was, was talking about how Cam, you know, how terrible he was. I was like, this guy became the best DFS player in the world because the lack of consistency and the proceed, you know, this, it keeps the ownership down and right. he's always a great play. Also the, the, the potential to run one or two in just even a, a, on a little play, you know, close to the goal line. That's why I don't think I would play him and McCaffrey together um, as much, even though you could argue that he could have three touchdown passes to McCaffrey. I mean, it's just, I, I, I would probably wouldn't play the two of them together, but I do think playing cam as a so playing cam naked, like makes some sense in DFS. And it, it just, I could say that if I play 10% cam all week, you know, every week of the year, he's going to, he's going to be the best quarterback two or three weeks at least. And going to pay that pay off uh, when he's, you know, low owned and, obviously has the highest as high a ceiling as anyone fair enough okay so that's uh, we've been through one two three four five so far four more of these guys to go and this next one is let's toss up this next slide david uh, of course our producer david walker thanks so much for helping out behind the scenes um this next one is antonio brown who look no Le'Veon bell the over under in this one is 98.5 receiving yards um there's been talk of wind up there in in cleveland i can't stand it when people get up on my twitter or they call into my radio show and ask about what i need to do about the wind and it's a friday or a saturday and they're asking about the wind on sunday it's like it's so 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 dumb um with that being said if if there are gut if 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 there is sustained winds you know 18 to 20 miles per hour at that point we might we might worry where are you Bobby Fine on Antonio Brown this week. It seems like there's a lot of great runners that you want to be paying up for. There's also Gronkowski. Are you are you are you finding yourself paying up for him? And also, what do you think about this 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 prop? Ninety eight point five receiving yards. Yeah, the prop's interesting because in in DFA, like with his ownership in a wet game, which obviously could go different ways. Like you can argue we can argue that separately, but like right. I don't know. I would find myself just always just saying, okay, I'll just bet on Antonio Brown. Um, but right. this, like, I would be like, just as I would, I feel like having like 70 yards and like two touchdowns is just as likely as having like 98. I'm, I guess I would take the over just cause it's Antonio Brown, but I, I don't really like, I wouldn't try and bet this either way. The, the, the last five. So he didn't, he only played Cleveland. He only played Cleveland once last year, but so this last one, two, three, four times playing Cleveland, here had been his yardage outputs. Last year, week one, just like this, um, 100 and, 182 yards. Um, 2016, he only he had 10 targets and eight receptions, but only 76 yards in that one. And then 2015, 139 yards on 14 targets, 10 receptions. And then for the 
second time they met in week 17, 17 targets, 13 receptions, 187 yards. So, I mean, most of the time he goes bananas. I'm going over with AB. Like Bobby Fi says, dude, there's certain things in life where if you're going to, I mean, there's just like, there's certain dudes you, you, you should just probably bet on. You're better off betting on them than you're betting against them. And mm-hmm. Antonio Brown, whenever there's no Le'Veon Bell, um, I'm going to say over. I think Bobby Fi has already said that, that his pick is over for this one. Yeah. Um, let me ask you about James Conner because he plays in this same game. If we do get a rain game, if we do get bad Big Ben on the road, James Conner has looked good in the preseason. And it seems like when you listen to those linemen in the locker room, they're so pissed off at Le'Veon Bell. You have like Marquise Pouncey and these dudes saying like, look, man, James Conner's awesome. Nobody thought that Kareem Hunt was going to be the rookie of the year. Like we're the ones who make these guys anyway. Like you guys just want to see what James Conner does. I kind of thought maybe this could be a swindle. If you get in James Conner, we could see a bunch of Jalen Samuels too, or maybe no. I think that James Conner could come in and do the kind of D'Angelo Williams deal, right? Where he just kind of takes over in the same role as Le'Veon. If that's the case, this prop on him almost broke my props tool. He's only 4,500 on DraftKings. He's facing our number five matchup of the week at Roster Watch. Um, the 70.5 rushing yards. He has a, he has a receptions prop of of um, of three and a receiving yards prop of 24.5 plus touchdown odds, even money touchdown odds at plus, at plus 100. So that's projected scoring through the formulation here in the sheet of 16.5 DK points. And that value is 3.67x uh, his salary, which is by far, out of these 75 players that I've collected props on so far, by far the best uh, best value. And it seems like it has some upside. But when you look at Chris Gimino's ownership projections, I haven't looked at him recently, but last time I looked, I think it was 28% or something. Mm-hmm. Um, you're a tournament player. How are you handling James Conner at 4,500? Yeah, it's it's not a not a very easy fade for me. We've seen how Pittsburgh has used these backup RBs in the past. I think Connor actually has some talent. You hear this the buzz coming out from them. I don't think it's trying to make anything up. I think they'll do it as an F you to Le'Veon to, for all that he's well, caused them. That too. That too. Um, yeah. yeah, just everything on this just sort of lends itself to like you know, let's say he he's he could easily go out there and have like, you know, put up 30 plus like whatever he <laughs> want and none of us are going to be surprised. So Really, if he's 30% owned, if he ends up around there, unless only because there are there are other you know cheap options or maybe not quite as cheap as him, but there's other good options, would I not say that you should double that? But I think I'll be ahead of the field no matter what. And I think that he's going to – I think he's going to beat these props too, which are crazy. But I, I, think, that, I think that's what's going to happen. Bobby, you, you do a ton of work across all the DFS sports, and you also have uh, like tutoring – um, cl- and classes available in the marketplace here at here at Roto Grinders. If I was one of your students and I was asking you, what, it, t- pr- Professor Bobby Fi, is is it, is it okay for me to play James Conner and Antonio Brown in my same tournament lineup? Yeah, in that case, I probably would want to run it back with something from the other side, and just betting on that game shooting out because. Yeah, he, actually, I think that it actually makes enough sense to where you could, like, there's enough value out there where you could almost do that in cash this week if it was a little better weather out there. I think that I'm still a little nervous about Brown, but, yeah, I do think it's okay. I think I would prefer to run it back with something on the other side because there's some underpriced plays on the other side if you want to bet on this game sort of shooting out, which you're going to need to for to win a GPP anyway. Right. And, and, if, you put, and if you were going to play in both, would it be best in that situation to also – I mean, do you also just play the quarterback and then just expect the whole team to, to go off? Just, or like- just because the running back, you know, rushing touchdown equity, I, I don't think that you'd need to play Big Ben also. Um, it is pretty crazy, that guy's home and road splits. I, I, it they're unbelievable, me. right? Yeah. They're really bad. Yeah, I mean, they're really bad. I wish I had the exact ones pulled up. But, it, like, it is, it is, it is so noticeable – uh, the the home and road splits. And I think that what you're saying is it's probably with a guy like Connor, it might be different than doing one of these deals. What do they call it? Like an onslaught where it's like you get a quarterback and a receiver and a runner. Maybe mm-hmm. if it was like in New Orleans this week, if you wanted to get Breeze and Michael Thomas and Kamara, mm-hmm. something like that might make might make more sense than mm-hmm. maybe getting big big Ben and the runner in the in the wideout in, in, in this spot. 
Yeah. And, you know, as much as we, lo- you know, no, we still don't know how much they're going to use them, you know, entirely like in the passing game, you know, exactly how it's going to re- flow when it comes to real game time. But my guess is you're going to just see a ton of that kid. Right. I think so too. And so, uh, yeah, that's definitely, he's, he's, he's like, he almost broke the, broke the sheet as far as value. The only higher value that I've uh, ever seen on this sheet, I've been doing it for four years and it was last year for Gio, Gio Bernard. Week. Mm-hmm. So that was, that was a really good week. Um, okay, so let's go to the next one here. We talked about it a little bit earlier. We kind of teased it. It was in that same game. We probably should have talked about it when we talked about McCaffrey and Cam Newton, but let's throw up the slide. Uh, this is Ezekiel Elliott, who has a pretty burly um, over under in the rushing yards department of 87.5. We know what happens with the Dallas Cowboys offense. They feed it to the big dog. The big dog eats and eats and eats until he's not hungry anymore. The big dog is Zeke Elliott. What do you think, Bobby Fye? You can take the over or the under on this 87.5. I'll take the oh, I'll take the under on 87.5. But even if he hit the over and you could guarantee it, I still wouldn't play him in DFS. Okay. Um, especially on DraftKings. I would consider it more on FanDuel. And I not just because the PPR factor, that's a part of it, but I also just I just don't like the way this this game is going to go. And there's so many good running back options. I just can't see wasting one on Zeke here if you, you know, for him to run for 95 yards and potentially no touchdowns. Like I'm just not going to not going to invest in that. We don't have to, we don't have any guarantees he's going to score. And even if he scores once, like there's a lot of guys out there who are going to have big weeks who are cheaper. And then there's some really, really good guys at the top. And I just don't find myself having any interest in them. Do you know, Bobby, do you know how many times in the National Football League Ezekiel Elliott's gone for less than 80 yards, 80 yards rushing? I'm mean, going to guess it's pretty low, probably. I mean, this is a different offensive line, first of all. Yeah, um, it, is. it um, is. But I would say five or six. I think it is, you know, it's, it's, it's two. Uh, week, oh, wow. one, week, <laughs> week, week, week one of his rookie year, he had 51 yards. And then we all remember week two last year at Denver, or at least I do. At least I do. So my show last year was Siege. I lost a huge bet on Zeke Elliott in that in that game. Um, but it, the, the the thing about Zeke Elliott is he's he has been. Um, I think for this I think for this prop I'm going to take take the over just because of just what he's able to do at, week in and week out. Only uh, only less than 80 yards twice in his in his career. Bobby will take the under. And I think just like I mean just from a PPR standpoint on DraftKings, it's a PPR site. Um, you know, Zeke Elliott has only really crapped the bed for you. Just been completely awful in one game, and it was in that it was in that Denver game. He's only scored you less than ten PPR points once in his entire career, which is just really unbelievable. And it just goes to show with the floor that he does get via his rushing and his touchdown equity, even though he can't be expected to do much through the passing game. So that's the second one, Bobby and I disagree on. I'll take the over on Zeke Elliott, 87.5, but I'm with Bobby on the fact that I'll have absolutely zero of him in any of my cash lineups or any of the tournament lineups that I'll try uh, try throwing out there. Um, we, we've already sort of talked about both sides of that game, so I don't really have anything else there. How about this one? I think this is an interesting game, Bobby. Um, are you from California? I thought I heard you being from California. Yep, yep Where, L.A. L.A. Okay, so not so not Northern California. Um, I'm but, actually in Northern. I'm in San Francisco right now. But okay, well there you go. It's perfect. I was I was I was hoping this kind of segue coming all the way from where uh, Bobby Fi is. G- Jimmy GQ, Jimmy Garoppolo, uh, heading to face off against Kirk Cousins uh, in the in the dome. Kirk Cousins' first game uh, there in that beautiful new stadium where. Um, well, there was FSTA in that stadium this year, and it is it is amazing. It is amazing. Uh, if you ever get a chance to head that way, I would certainly suggest it. Jimmy Garoppolo has a um, has a prop of 265.5 yards. Kirk Cousins has a prop of 268.5 yards. So this one's not which which one do we you know whether we like the over or the under. We could do that. But I think for our purposes, I just want to—I want us to go on record of which guy, which of these two guys we like better from a from a yardage standpoint. Um, I don't like either of them all that much. I <laughs> think that I think that they might even let Cousins have some plays, and he's got you know two of the best five route runners in football to throw the ball to. But I think that just with game flow, I really like the Vikings as a team, and I like their defense a lot. But I also think that Garoppolo is going to be forced to throw the ball a lot more than Cousins in this one. 
So I would give the slight edge in terms of who I would think is who I think is going to throw for more yards to Garoppolo. I just don't see the cousins needing to do all that in this type of a game where they should be able to win it on the ground with a little bit of him early on and then with their defense, most of all. So I'm, uh, I'm going that way personally. Bobby takes, uh, Bobby takes Jimmy GQ. I'll be taking my boy, dude. He's a golden son of roster watch Kirk cousins, man. My dude, the, like he's, he's presidential. And uh, I, I think he's going to, I think he's going to go in there. He's got the, as much as I love Marquise Goodwin, I mean, it's clear that it's clear that Cousins has, has the better receiving options. He has oh, yeah. a good, good, good chemistry with Stephon Diggs. And, you know, Stephon Diggs is going to get Richard Sherman. And was, we were out there at, at 49ers camp, dude. And, like, Sherman is not fast anymore. I think that Stephon Diggs is going to be able to get separation on him. So, Kirk Cousins is, I mean, here's the thing, dude. He's got to answer a lot of questions. He hasn't really looked really good that really good this preseason. It's like they got to the NFC Championship last year without him anyway. Why pay up for him? He's got to go out and really prove himself to, to that fan base and to that club. I think he comes out hot. I, I'm, I'm going to like him to uh, to, to go over uh, the 268.5 and to beat Jimmy Garoppolo on our little prop here. So I will be taking Kirk Cousins. It, do, you, do you have any interest anywhere else in this game? You talked to Alvin Cook earlier. He has a pretty nice little prop of 70.5 rushing yards um i think the applied receiving total the, the receptions let me just look in so i'm exactly right the receptions prop was was 2.5 so that's an implied 19.5 receiving yards and he's minus 120 to score which is one of the better uh, touchdown odds in the in the whole week uh 12th best matchup on the ground for our for our proprietary algorithm at roster watch do you do you I have thoughts on Dalvin or any of these, like Stefan, any of these guys, any plays in this game? Not in this, not this particular week. I wouldn't be surprised if somebody had a big game. I do think that Dalvin Cook is an interesting overlooked play. We just don't know exactly how much, you know, they're going to maybe take, take it a little bit easy on him after the injury. And maybe, you know, he won't get the, the short yardage and goal line work that Lat Murray might get. It just worries me a little bit that it could take away from his ceiling at that price, which you're going to need your running backs to hit on a week like this. So otherwise I'd be interested if I knew he was, they said, Hey, look, he's our guy. We want to make sure you get him 20 to 25 touches. I would feel a lot better about it. And that's possible that he'll still get there, but I just worry about Lat Murray, maybe snaking some of those, uh, those touchdowns. And I just, I don't think they need to use like go crazy running him. So I'm not going to play Dalvin cook myself. Yeah. Too much. And, and it's, it's, it seems like they'd be perfectly happy to have a committee with those two guys. Right. I and mean, mm -hmm. it seems like last year was the opposite. Like Latavius was the one that was coming in a little bit off an injury and, you know, it opened the door for Dalvin just to take the job completely this year. Maybe they'll, they'll ease Dalvin in, you know, be kind of the opposite of last year where, Lat where Latavius will get a little, a little run at the, at the beginning. I think it's inexplicable to, be, you know, put a, you know, to not play Dalvin as much as possible, but they know more about that injury than you or I do. So, yeah, I'm, I'll be I'll be hands off for sure. Did you say anything? One about thing about your boy cousins, though, about this game, I, I did want to say like there there was one play I was going to make up that I really would that I probably will end up making a little bit. It would probably be Rudolph. Um, we know how Cousins loves to throw to his tight ends, and I know the offense is different, but I think Rudolph is one of the better like more underrated tight ends in football. Uh, he's had a lot of turnover at quarterback, and I think that you're going to have. I think he's going to have a really big season. And at 4.5, like on DK, for example, I think he makes for an interesting tournament play. I like it. I, I haven't heard any, I haven't heard anybody talk about yeah. Rudolph. I mean, it's just, there's so many good, well, let's talk about the tight ends, man, before we get into our last prop here. I think we have a little time. Um, are you, are you focused in on one guy or are you kind of, you, you have a little core dudes you're looking at? I've been, I've been really interested of forcing Gronkowski at that price. And then, um, you know, Jordan, Jordan Reed and uh, also Jack Doyle have been the three. I feel like those are just three really good options at the tight end. I think for those reasons, guys like Kyle Rudolph, guys like Delaney Walker is going to get, get Kiko Alonso. He's going to go mm -hmm. so overlooked. Um, mm -hmm. are, are there any of these tight ends who you're looking at or anything that you, any kind of, you know, insight that you have on the, on, on, the, on the position here on Saturday heading into the week one? Yeah, I'm pretty high on Jordan Reed uh, just skipping, you know, it's easy enough to pay up at tight ends. You can play Gronk anywhere. You could play Travis Kelsey if you wanted to. You could play Delaney, who's going to be overlooked. Um, and I like Rudolph, but I mostly am sticking to the to the Rudolph Jordan Reed range with some Doyle. And one other guy who I'm going to throw in just as a GPP dart, like 
is Jesse James. Just because, <laughs> just, just because like Cleveland is going to be, it's true. It's true. they're going to be the worst team in like history this year against the tight end. Like I'm not saying he's going to have a ton of yards. I'm talking about like the guy could have, he's 2,700 on DK and he could easily like, I, he could have multiple touchdowns in this game. <laughs> like yeah, he could. It, it wouldn't surprise me. So I just think as a tournament dart, if you find your lineups kind of chalky and you want to, you just want to pay up for everything and spend down somewhere, take Jesse James at 2,700 unowned. And there's no reason why he couldn't beat all these lower tiered, you know, tight ends that I was just talking about. When I got all my Steelers props in earlier, not even a touchdown prop for, for Vance McDonald. And this, whenever that happens, it makes me think that they might know, you know, I don't, yeah. is Vance McDonald been ruled out officially or we just think he's going to be out? I just thought he was going to be out, but I didn't hear anything official. There, well, there wasn't a touchdown prop on him. And when that yeah. happens, it's not a good sign. So I yeah, like he's that. out. He's out. Yeah. So, no, yeah, he's out. He's out. Okay. So yeah, Jesse James, that's a, that's an interesting, no one's going to, no one, that's a point. That's a point. Oh, two percenter. Um, yep. So if he goes out, Bobby Fowl will be dancing in the streets of, out, out there in San Francisco. Um, let's see. All right, let's let's throw let's throw up, throw up this last one. Then I just want to kind of BS and spitball a couple of other things with Bobby before we get out of here at the top of the hour. Um, and this is a kind of a d- different one. This is we're just going to choose which one of these props that we like best uh, for 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 touchdown odds. So we have John Ross for plus two fifty. We have the aforementioned Keelan Cole for plus two twenty five. We have Josh Gordon, the slithering anaconda, for 300, plus 335. We have Marquise Goodwin for plus 225. We have Mike Williams for plus 335. And Jordan Reed for plus 200 to score. So all these guys are kind of, kind of long shots, at least where you can double, you know, double the amount that you've wagered if, if any of them do happen to get in the box. In the case of Josh Gordon, in the case of Mike Williams, you can more than triple up. Bobby, out of all those props, does one stick out to you for, for, from a touchdown odds perspective that you would like to bet on the most? I think Jordan Reed is going to score. I think he's um, scoring too. I like Jordan Reed a lot. Uh, who did you say? Who were you talking about? The Anaconda? I didn't understand. I, I didn't hear what name oh, you said. Oh, jo- Josh Gordon. So what's the deal here? Like, we're really going to expect this guy to play and, and he's not he like, he, why are the odds that? far against it i know that you know his hand i don't know i just how many is he do we have a snap count on him or something i don't know but he's it just he's, seems he's a the, little low he's the like sickest seems, yeah he's the sickest man on earth so he is it's, it's like uh, i mean this, yeah. it's not like this guy doesn't like perform when he's out there except i mean he's had horrible quarterbacks throwing him the ball but like he's gonna get attention he's gonna they're gonna look his way and He'd be the guy I would bet on if I if I was going for a longer shot one, but I I like Reed is the most likely for sure. He's that's a bet I would actually make. Okay, so 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 Bobby Fly takes Reed here on this one. I think for the and I'm with you on the I touch with the Josh Gordon one because I think it's crazy too, and I, I'm actually probably gonna make a probably gonna make a bet on it whenever they whenever they open it up. Um, all these bets have only a hundred dollar limits on them anyway, but um, I think the one I like best do I do you like do you like John Ross this week? I love John Ross this week. I love I, John I, Ross. I don't have a, a great, you know, reasoning or anything. So sell me on it. Well, okay. So the, 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 the defensive backfield of the Indianapolis Colts is by far the least athletic in the whole national football league. Uh, John Ross on that very same field ran a 4.2140. They're in, they're in Lucas oil. I was there. I saw it with my own two eyes. It was too fast. I couldn't believe it. It was the sickest. And he was just, he's looked good in the preseason. They've taken two big shots to him at the very beginning of games where he's gotten behind these guys. He will get behind these dudes like Nate Hairston and Pierre Desir. And just, these guys are really, really bad. And um, I, I just, I think that this is going to be a great game for Andy Dalton. I think it's going to be a great game for John Ross and for AJ Green. And I know that that's probably like famous last words, great game for Andy Dalton, right? <laughs> depending, on, depending on this dude for your fantasy fortunes, where, where are you on the – it seems like that game is picking up some steam. I didn't think it was going to pick up steam, but I've heard now um, people here on Roto Grinders on the shows through the week talking about targeting uh, to this game. Um, people uh, – Chris Gimino, who did the owner – who does the ownership report show here on this – here on for Roto Grinders premium subscribers. I was listening to that right before we came on. He's on there with this shark dude. I forget his name. Do you know that guy's name? He's on that ownership report. I missed, I missed that. I, mean, I missed it this week. So like Epcot or something. Escott. Escott. Oh, yeah, yeah, he was yeah, on yeah. there with him. Yeah. And, and um, he, they would say saying on there that probably 
it looks like Dalton's probably going to creep up into the top four own quarterbacks on this slate. How do you feel about that whole thing? A.J. Green, Andy Dalton, John Ross. I know you're not sold on John Ross, but how do you feel about A.J. Green? How do you feel about No, I'm okay. I'm okay with the idea what you said about Ross. Like, I, I just feel like I don't have a great feel for who these guys are, and I just – I mean, as much as it looked all cool that AJ Green gets a million targets every week and he gets, you know, it, it just, they're, they're so in, ineffective and so inefficient. Um, I just don't want to, I think on a full week, I just, I'm not going to go there personally. And I don't believe in Indianapolis' defense. I just don't know who Cincinnati is yet. I don't think they do necessarily. I'd be more interested in Nixon than either of those guys, either of that way. So I'm not going there personally, but I might get a few, I mean, I might have to do a little bit more digging, but I, I could see what you're saying about Ross. I didn't really know too much about him. Um, I knew he had a good, you know, a, a good spring, and I, everybody says uh, they talk highly of him. I just feel like there's other places I'd rather go. So I'm not as as high on it as you, maybe, but I, I need to dig a little further. If you if you're putting in 300 lineups or whatever it is you, you do, man, just 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 do me a favor and just get in one with with my boy yeah. Jay. Jay. Okay. Um, and then let's see. As far as you you mentioned Joe Mixon, I like I like that. I think that that's great leverage against all these everybody that's going to be playing, you know, the Dalton. I mean, it seems like maybe playing. I don't want to think playing Dalton in my cash game is a little bit thin. So I'm going to have to think more about that. But um, as far as the other side, Jack Doyle seems to be picking up a whole lot of steam. Andrew Luck hasn't hasn't been really pushing the football down the field too much uh, mm-hmm. so far in the preseason. We all know he's coming back off shoulder surgery. He's got the great. Uh, rapport with Jack Doyle this could be the kind of thing where we see some good target volume there uh, was, was he anybody that you were interested in you mentioned you like Jordan Reed and those guys are about the same price are you gonna have any Jack Doyle mixed in absolutely Jack Doyle is the other guy who, who I'm you know it's, it's the bit it's Rudolph Reed and Doyle are my main three um, and I, I do think I do expect Doyle to pick it back up regardless of how luck looks and I expect luck to be fine um, that's what makes this game actually a little bit interesting. I, I think you could, you know, cheaply build a nice little game stack in this spot and then just pay up for every other spot that you want. But um, maybe I might actually do a little bit of that because that makes some sense. Um, but yeah, I think Doyle is is definitely a, a, is an excellent play at 3,600. I'm not worried about Ingram. So let me, let me ask you about, um, let me ask you about the chalk and how you handle it in tournaments. Because I don't know what I'm going to do. What am I going to do with Alvin Kamara? Because I want to play him so bad. You know, I really do. But Jamino is now saying he's going to be maybe over 40% owned in tournaments. What, at what point, like, is there, is it just, I mean, it, it, it has to be case by case, right? For there to be a Mason Dixon line for you to say, I, I'm not playing him at this in football. I, I know in basketball, it's probably different, right? Sometimes you get these dudes that you just have to plug in and, and play in basketball, right? Because you get late news. And it's just they're cheap, and you don't care if they're seventy percent on. You just need to have them to win. Is it is it is it like that in football, Bobby? When you, when you're playing in tournaments too? Yeah, I mean, so it's interesting because like this week, what I would just tell anybody is just we'll pivot to one for one third the ownership play David Johnson, who the last time we actually saw him play football was not even where Alvin Kamara has come close to yet, and was getting thirty touches a game, not twenty that Alvin Kamara is supposed to get. So I would just say that's the easiest pivot in the world. And we honestly don't have a whole lot of reason other than, yeah, it is a great matchup, but yeah, Kamara has never been an every down back. Like that's just not who he is as a, as a runner. He's not a guy who's going to grind out every play. I love, I, I love him. I bet he gets right around 20 touches. I think David Johnson has probably the same or more upside and uh, just pivot. Over. That's what I would do is just pivot over there. Uh, if I was going to, you know, paying basically the same price, I get a guy at one third the ownership that I have no reason to think is going to be any worse than the other. Um, sorry, that probably was just the first part of the question. Well, yeah. And it just, I, I should also say that people had forgotten about David Johnson. They've forgotten that he, they, they've forgotten that in the game. So if you just take the games wherever, because you, you remember his, his, his rookie year, he was producing even the beginning of it when he wasn't even getting any touches. But once he started getting the touches after I believe week eight, uh, once he started getting more than seven, in any game, he's gotten more than seven touches, which is basically every game except for the first eight of his career in, in the NFL. He's gotten you over 25 PPR points, 56.9% of the time. Mm-hmm. I mean, it, it, nobody touches him. Like, nobody, nobody, nobody touches David Johnson as far as that kind of scoring profile and that scoring distribution. Nobody touches him. And it's not like he's coming back off a torn Achilles or a t- blown ACL or a t- Liz Frank. He hurt his wrist. That has nothing to do with how you run the football. 
Yeah. So I, I wish Le'Veon was playing this weekend because it would even lower his ownership that much more. Oh, I, I yeah. think he's such a good play this week. Like, I don't care what defense you put against him, who it is. I'm just going to play the guy who's who literally has no – we have no reason to think he's going to fade either. They're talking about a hand. That's not a big deal. Like, that is not something that should take away from his future. So uh, if we see anything close to what he used to be, if he's just 75 80% of it, I still think he's worthwhile as being the top paying, you know, top guy to pay for. So I see a Kamara fade as being fine. I'm probably going to be about half the field. He probably will have a big week, but I still want to get away from it just because the ownership is so crazy. And I have no reason to think that David Johnson won't outscore him. Yeah. I mean, I agree. I mean, to me, my, the, the way that I've solved this in cash is just attempted to get them both into my lineup. <laughs> so, mm-hmm. I mean, it's like, and, 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 and you can do it if you're comfortable with maybe like a cheap John Ross, maybe some kind of cheap, uh, run, up, run that back with some cheap Jack Doyle or something. I mean, there, there's a way to get there in, in cash. Um, but in tournaments, so if you – do you feel like in tournaments just – I feel like Kamara is just such a big deal. So I just want to ask you one more question about it. Do, do, you th- do you think that a way to gain leverage against those who are using Kamara against you in tournaments is to roster the Drew Brees and Michael Thomas stack? Because Michael Thomas has a very nice prop, set a seven reception prop. 85.5 yards for the over-under and minus 125 to score. That's about as beastly a prop as I've ever seen from Michael Thomas going against a, a putrid Tampa Bay secondary that will be even be – and look, Brent Grimes isn't even that good, but he's the best they got, and he's doubtful. Yeah, yeah. I uh, What I would do if you really want to get creative, that game, I mean, if for some reason New Orleans doesn't show up, and I know the matchup's terrible – but taking a completely unknown Mike Evans, I probably would lean slightly ahead of doing that ahead of Obel, Odell. I think you maybe take a shot on him and then run it back with Thomas and Breeze. And it's a weird little mini game stack that like the game flow could lend it to you seeing both these teams throwing the ball more. And it would just completely throw everything up in the air. Like, I mean, we've seen these New Orleans games in the past. We didn't so much last year. I know the defense is better, but I'm not saying I'm Tampa Bay is going to play this kind of game. I'm just saying if it happens one time out of five, you could potentially have just monster outings from all those guys. So if you're playing a bunch of GBPs, I think that's an interesting way to go. It's like, it's like um, Lord Reed said on the Roto Grinders Roto World Show that they have here on Grinders Live. It's the court. It's the course field of, of fantasy football. Yep. And you, some of these times these games can absolutely go off uh, there in the dome. So I, li- I like that. It's interesting. I mean, hey, if you're thinking about playing Odell Beckham versus Jalen Ramsey, why not think about playing Mike Evans against Marshawn Lattimore? I mean, it just, it just, it just takes one play with that guy. So um, certainly agree there. Uh, I guess we're about to run out of time, but let's just get out of here on one last thing. I'll put you on the spot, Bobby. We'll go through the rest of our – uh, go through the re- go through our props here, and I'll give you a little time to think about it. But what is your play of the week? That is your what is your favorite play of the week? I think I know what it is. It might be my same favorite play. And then also, what is your one long shot kind of low owned, low dollar, low s- salary dude who you think has a shot to go off? And while you think about that, I'm going to read over our our bets here. So for the Odell Beckham uh, over under, we Bobby and I both have under 72. Point five yards for uh, Keelan Cole, the Jacksonville Jaguars. Bobby and I both took over the 51.5. Leonard Fournette, we both took over his rushing prop of 72.5 yards. For Cam Newton, Bobby and I disagreed. Bobby took under 37.5 rushing yards. I took over 37.5 rushing yards. But we both took Christian McCaffrey to have over, what was it, I believe 42.5 uh, receiving yards, 43.5 mm-hmm. receiving yards. We both took Antonio Brown to be go over 98.5 uh, receiving yards. Um, after Antonio Brown, we had – it was – let's see. Let me put – we got a new email in here since I sent the list. So it is uh, – what was it after him? Was it Zeke? Oh, yeah, it was Zeke. Uh, Zeke yeah. yeah, so 89 uh, – 87.5. Bobby takes the under. Alex takes the over. Then we had Jimmy Garoppolo versus Kirk Cousins, um, both at about 268 um, yards passing. Uh, Bobby takes Jimmy Garoppolo. Alex takes Kirk Cousins. And then for our favorite TD props out of the five provided, uh, Bobby took Jordan Reed at plus 200. I took John Ross at plus 250. So, Bobby, who's your favorite play of the week and who's your sleeper? Uh, they sort of want to say the same guy just because it's – I mean, my favorite play sucks because he's going to be so chalky, and so it's not a great GPP option. I, I really just think that there's no way Allen doesn't get there. Um, 
I love David Johnson as, as a, I guess, I guess as a play also, but I, I think that the guy who I'm playing the most of who's against the field is Lamar Miller. <laughs> Lamar Miller. What a great one that is. Just what, what, tell, tell everybody real quick what, what you love about that. Just a, just a high over under good, good scoring environment. Yeah. Good game environment. He's 50. He's cheap. He's going to be completely overlooked between guys like Collins and Connor and all these guys. And he's like one of a few guys who I expect to really be a worse course back this year. So I think this is just a, a good spot for him. And I think the price is too low. And I think there is real a ton of upside. I think he's going to get a ton of touches. It, it's a little bit game. The game flow could worry you if New England gets up big or something like that. They, you know, you might not see as much of him or he might not be utilized as much in the passing game. But I still think overall he's the guy I just want to gamble on this week. I just think the upside is too high for that price and the projected ownership, which will be like a tenth of anybody else we mentioned. All right, so mine is going to be David Johnson. He's by far my favorite play of the week. I, I think, I mean, I would play him over Kamara if I had to, but I, I can choose to play them both, so I think that I will in a lot of my lineups. And it was just for all the reasons that we mentioned earlier. My, my long shot play is going to be one Mr. Tyler Eifert, who's finally healthy, and we've seen when he is healthy. Maybe when everybody else playing all these other Cincinnati Bengals, they're going to be throwing their remote controls to their TV whenever Tyler Eifert goes for seven receptions, 80 yards and two touchdowns just to swindle us all. So that'll be a Tyler Eifert for my long shot play. With that, we're going to get out of here, guys. Thanks so much for tuning in. This is the first episode of the PropCast here on Roto Grinders. You can find Bobby on Twitter at Bobby Fi. You can also find him here for all of his content, all the different videos, and his classes that he teaches as far as DFS tutoring. Again, my name is Alex Dunlap. You can find me on Twitter at Alex Dunlap NFL at Roster Watch. You can listen to me tonight on Roster Watch, 7 to 9 Eastern, Sirius XM Fantasy Sports, tomorrow morning on Sirius XM NFL Radio, and simulcast on Sirius XM Fantasy Sports Radio for your game day fantasy football talk. So until next time, guys, for Bobby Five, for our producers, my name is Alex Dunlap. This has been the PropCast. We are getting the hell out of here.